Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and today we're going to go over how to interface a ZTE Velocity Hotspot Wi-Fi device. This will be used uh, if you have an older CS15 or a CS15 that's 3G or an older CS20 that's 3G, and you're trying to get on the 4G platform. Um, this is really used for an AT&T micro SIM card, so you can get an AT&T card directly, or if you're getting a micro SIM card through SmartNet, so via Smart Connect card, this is a handy device to put that, that SIM card in this device to get on the 4G platform. So we'll go over how to install the micro SIM card into the device, how to program in um, the new Smart Connect APN, because the Smart Connect card has a different APN from the default settings from AT&T. If you're using a card directly from AT&T, the APN broadband is defaulted, so you can just plug it in and away you go. Then we'll go over some basic settings, based on the older CS20, uh, if you have older firmware, and how to set up a Wi-Fi device. So this is the G4 Geomatics team in Houston. So myself, uh, Jeff, do technical sales, and uh, special thanks to John O'Rourke. Here's John's information. He acquired the ZTE device and uh, helped do the testing and setting up to, to get help clients get on the 4G platform. And we have Ronald and Celia on the service department and the office manager. So our information is here. If you need any assistance, please feel free to reach out. Let's take a, some overview, basically, of the tips when, when it's set up. The most important thing is on the ZTE, we noticed, first turn on the ZTE device, let it boot up. And do this before you turn on your GS sensor or your CS20 or CS15 data collector. And give it a good 30, 40 seconds, it'll turn on. And then over here, you should see the uh, signal strength pop up. And um, then it should show the device name and the password. Sometimes it's got a, there's a little button on the main screen to hold down for a couple of seconds to come into this screen. Okay, this is really important um, because if you boot the CS20 up before the mobile hotspot, it'll try to take it over and it, it doesn't allow it to get on the internet. So just that's a really important to turn the hotspot on first. Um, later on, I'll pull the simulator up, but we will be we'll get on the internet and see the at sign. Since it's doing a hotspot, there's no bar to show the signal strength. And that, that's typical. If we weren't on the internet, there'd be a triangle here to say there's no internet. What we want to do is when we dial in, previously uh, we'd set F11 up, a hotkey over here to dial in, start streaming data. We found with the hotspot, it's a lot easier if you click on here and then hit start stream data. And then when, when you're finished and you want to hang up, then stop streaming data. So use the icon here to stream when you're ready to do RTK. And, and that works a lot better. Otherwise, the F11, there's a, there's a big delay. One thing we also noticed is when it first turns on and when you hit the start streaming data, it takes a little bit longer to lock on or get the RTK stream data around 10 to 20, 15 seconds. Okay, so those are just a few tips once it's set up to keep uh, this information and these tips in mind that, that uh, work to help it work better in the field. So once again, uh, if you've got a micro SIM card, the small SIM card here that pops out directly from AT&T, the, the APN said will be broadband or lowercase, and the ZT is already set up with this default setting. So just pop it in and then you should be on the internet. Okay, so just make sure you're getting a micro SIM card. That's the most important thing. Now, a lot of clients are getting their SIM cards through Smart Connect or SmartNet. So once again, see how it's all white on one side? That way we know it's through Smart SmartNet. And once again, it is an AT&T based card, but AT&T gives the Smart Connect car, card a new APN or a separate APN. And, and once again, it's lowercase m2m005125.attz. Zero zero so once again, that's uh, in one of these sections, we'll go over how to program this APN into the new hotspot device that'll allow this to get on the internet and then run your GPS. Uh, hello, this is John, John O'Rourke with the Geomatic G4 Geomatic Resources here again. And just going to show you how to put the uh, Smart Connect SIM card into the uh, ZTE Velocity hotspot. So you can see right here, there's a little flap where it says SIM. This is a, a micro SIM card. We're just going to 
get that out of the way. And we're gonna put this in the uh, gold chip bit facing up. And with this little corner piece on the right hand side. So it just goes in that way facing into the device. Pop it in, it's a little spring loaded thing. You'll feel it grab and then you shut it up. And that's how you install the SIM card, the micro SIM card. Okay, and that's how we install the SIM card. Now we'll go over how to program the APN. Okay, um, we got the uh, AT&T uh, ZTE hotspot turned on. We'll click on our Wi-Fi device. And in this case, it's the Wi-Fi 2635. We'd hit connect and we type in the, the password that's on the screen. Uh, once it's connected, it just takes a minute to connect. And you can also actually use your cell phone to do this. We'll go down to Internet Explorer and we'll type in the IP 192.168.1.1. And this will actually pick up the, the Wi-Fi manager. And then we'll type in the password, lowercase att a admin. And then we can log on. Uh, when it comes up, we'll go down to settings, click on network, and APN. And now it defaults to at t broadband. So what we want to do is we want to add And we'll just call this Smart Connect. And then we're going to type in the APN, which is lowercase m2m005125.attz. And this is the APN for Smart Connect. Okay. Then we'll hit Save. Then we'll come back. And now a default back to AT&T Broadband, we'll hit Smart Connect. And then we'll set as default. And that should program at that point that APN into this device. Okay, so we added, created Smart Connect, saved it, had to go back and repick it from the broadband and set as default, and that programs that new APN to the device. So after that, I'll hit log out, and we'll says you wish to log out. We'll say yes, and that's how we program the APN to the ZTE. Okay, um, so once that's set up, um, let's go over if you have an older unit, um, and this would be like if you have a CS20 or CS15, your firmware's on a CS20 is older than version 5.5, we'll show you how to connect via Windows. Uh, so on here, it's, it says it's a good idea to uh, reset Windows on the CS20. If you hold the power key down for three seconds, then you just say reset Windows. I would really advise, we have another video on how to reset the whole system. So in this case, you want to back up all your jobs and your settings. And I go through and format you know, system RAM, format internal memory, all that good stuff, and do a full reset and then start from scratch. But bare minimum, uh, just do the reset of Windows. Okay. Now, the first thing, if you had a SIM card in here before, the first thing to do is take that SIM card out. It's a 3G get it canceled and um, they then want to turn off the uh, the settings and captivate to look at that 3G. So basically we go under settings, connections, or the connections. So once again if I pull the simulator up, the settings, connections, or the connections. And in this case we hit CS Internet, hit edit, and turn off that, that device. Okay. Otherwise, once you take the SIM card out, it'll keep saying, hey, I can't find that SIM card, and it'll drive you nuts. And as soon as you take that SIM card out, then be a triangle if you're saying you're not on the internet, okay? So once again, settings connections, uncheck that, and that'll turn off looking for the uh, SIM card on the CS modem, because it's 3G. All right, um, so once again, we have our job here. That's now blank and we're still not on the internet. What we're gonna do now, if you have firmware that's version 3.0 or higher, you have to turn on YLAN in Captivate. So once again, you go to Settings, System, then go into Regional Settings, number three. And in this case, you'll tab over to the other tab, and you'll see a little box down here that says Switch YLAN Drivers. Really important, check that box. 
It'll pump you turn off the CS20, then it'll power back on and it'll have this set up. So typically I'd be doing this under the work style. Right now we'll have a work style loaded uh, like IMAX and then this will hold this. And then we can create another work style and it'll hold this set in, in your work styles. Okay. Now, if once again, uh, if you're doing firmware version older than version five or less, it's important because version 5.5 they has had a wizard to set up YLAN inside Captivate. So you have older firmware version when it boots up, and if, if it's less than 5.5, you have to set up via Windows. So once again, uh, if you come back here, if I hit Function Windows, that'll take us to Windows. And what we want to do is hit the Start button, Settings then hit control panel, okay? And what will happen is we can then select network and dial up, this icon here, click on it. And basically we're gonna see a, a whole bunch of connect, connections. And see here is a TI YLAN, there's a red X. If you hold your stylus down for a few seconds, then hit enable, that'll enable YLAN, okay? That's important. And then we go to the main Windows screen, we'll come down here and we'll click and uh, it should pop up to allow us to look uh, for a new wi-fi device so we want to make sure the zte is turned on in this case it's the att wi-fi 2388 device and um, basically click on this tab network information check the box notify me when the wireless is available it should populate the list of wi-fi devices that that the collector can see Okay, so once again, we have to click down here, and this, this box will pop up, okay? And basically, when, it, when after a few seconds, we should see that device name come up, and then we, we click on that device name, and then hit the connect button. And at that point, we want to try to program in the username and, or the password of that Wi-Fi device, okay? So once again, under the wireless information, we'd see, in this case, it's a different device, it's iPhone. We'd hit connect or hold the stars and hit connect. And in this example, this at t Wi-Fi 2388 should populate here, connect, and then it'll prompt you to, to type in this password. Okay, so once again, the next box comes up and the password will be typed in, then hit the enter button here and that should then store that password and then windows should hold that so once we do this it's just a one-time operation okay so once again we turn on the zte in the main screen it should show the device name and the password so it's very easy to find that all right so once that's set up we'd be inside captivate and uh, once again the at sign should come on it says we're on the internet and um, we can click on this icon and go to RTK data link status connectivity, and I'll show us here that um, there's no SIM card, but we're connected to the internet. And once again, there's no bar level, you're either on or off the internet, okay? Now, once again, uh, when we're ready to collect data on our job, we click on this icon and hit the start streaming data, like we said earlier, that's the best way to dial in with the, uh, with the uh, hotspot. And it, it'll take, once you hit that start stream, and it takes a little bit longer than when you have a SIM card, around 10, 15 seconds, then the error will start pumping, then we should fix and get down to a few hundreds, okay? All right, um, I'll pull the simulator up just real fast. That was if you had an older firmware version. We went over this on a previous video, but once again, if I had, if I hit the star key, in this case, I'm using work styles. So if I had an IMAX work style, to set it up, once again, we hit settings, connections, all the connections, and then we'd want to make sure, use internet connection, we would change this to YLAN. And we'd hit search and see that device and type in the password. And that's how we connect. Um, we don't have to go through the Windows functionality we did earlier if you have version 5.5 or higher. Okay. Now, what we'll do is once that's set up under GS Connections, like in our other videos, under RTK Rover, we'd hit Edit. we check that box. It'll be CS Internet number one, RTCM version three. And we want to check this box here to receive RTK network information and show only. 
So if you have multiple users, uh, if you're a bigger firm, if someone else is using the same username and password, this would say too many concurrent users. That's a handy tip right there. Once again, the second screen, RTK base, just leave the default settings automatically detect. RTK Rover, since we have an IMAX work style, we're, this is box is checked, have IMAX selected. Once you edit the work style for near, then just change that to nearest. That's the one setting you have to change. I'm gonna hit OK. And then if we come down here to control with RTK Rover highlighted, this is where our, let me go back, our server to use. We'll look at Texas SmartNet. So if I hit enter and F3 edit, there's the name, there's my IP, lowercase 10,000, and then ntrip is the username and password that SmartNet provides. Okay, and we've got to pick the right mount point. So since we're doing an IMAX, it's MSN IMAX. If you hit the source table, that's where you pick MSN IMAX. If you're editing the near, you'd simply come down once you're in the near profile and change that to MSN near. So MSN is if you're, you want the GNS S data, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou. So it's important to use these two source tables if you're doing an IMAX and a near. So those are some quick settings to set it up. There's another video that goes in a little bit more detail, but hopefully that's uh, helpful and beneficial. And once again, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to either myself uh, or John for technical support. And for service, we have Ronald and Celia that runs the uh, the, the Leica office, in, or the, sorry, the G4 Geomatics office in Houston. And here's the Leica support team as well, another resource. Here's the support number, the 1-800 and email. It's just another resource that you can lean on. Okay, well, I hope you found that beneficial and helpful. And once again, if you have any questions, just feel free to let us know. Thanks for listening.